Hey guys, I'm Denise. And I'm Lindsay. And we're born this gay. Hello, welcome, welcome. Welcome oh, to uh, Born This Gay podcast. Yep, yep. Yeah, we're just, uh, you know, two gay girls out here living our best life and um, trying to spread some news around, I guess. I don't know what. Yeah. Just a I little mean, bit of everything, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. LGBT topics. LGBT there you go. Topics. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, today, guys, we are going to share with you our five best tips for if you want to start a podcast, because we've been doing it for a year. Yeah, a whole year now. That's crazy. Guys, we are officially season two. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do I a like season it. a year. Okay. Season two, episode one. We made it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a decent season. I'd like to say, you yeah. know, lots of ups, lots of downs, lots of happiness, lots of tears. Yeah, there was a, like she said, lots of ups and downs. <laughs> but we're here to give you guys a little bit of advice if y'all are thinking about starting at your own. Maybe you can um, avoid some of those downs that we went through pretty heavily. Yep. And uh, if guys, if you uh, like the content that we're creating and you want to help us out or if you've seen our content before and you really want to uh, support us, it really helps out our channel if you hit that subscribe button. So. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You know, we're going to talk about some pretty good stuff here, guys. So we promise you're going to want to stick around. Yes, please. Um, so, yeah, we'll get straight into it. Uh, if you are starting your own podcast, I just want to warn you, it's not as easy as you think. Yeah, they. It, I mean, it, everything you see on TV looks really easy, right? Yo, and nothing is never as easy as it is. I just use a double negative. See, that's how hard it is. I honestly went into this thinking that we could just like press record on a on a phone camera and be and fine. It's done. Yeah, just a mic, full phone, easy. <laughs> how hard could it be? Well, we found out. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty difficult actually. So we're gonna start off today with. Five tips that we came up with from our own personal experience that we think might help you guys out quite a bit. True. So starting off, tip number one, be patient. Guys, it's a steep learning curve. Yes. Like it like like I said, it was it wasn't as easy as I thought it was. Um you gotta learn things like lighting, you gotta learn things like audio, video recording, editing. Mm, editing was the big one. Guys, you just you just be real patient, be nice to yourself, be nice to your partner if you have one. Because, I mean, y'all are both going through it together, and I know it can get pretty frustrating, but in the end, y'all decided you were going to do this podcast for a reason, so just keep that one in mind and push through. Yep, yep, completely. I mean, yeah, basic setup. Don't don't go anything fancy. One of the things that we did, unfortunately, was we just kind of, we took on a lot at first, right? So, I mean, we, we started off with way too much equipment. My best advice, yeah, just be patient with what you have, work with what you got now, and just mm -hmm. start posting. Yeah. Um, just getting, getting content out there whenever you can. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, so step number two, um, we did this very heavily, guys. Consume other podcasts, how to uh, use different platforms. Guys, like YouTube's there for a reason. We find amazing content on there. Um, pretty much everything we learned how to do has been through other people teaching us that on similar setups like we have right now. So... It's just a really quick, you know, YouTube search, how to do a podcast, which is probably how y'all found this video as well. Yeah, um, that's exactly right. Yeah, just keep doing stuff like that. And then eventually it's going to kind of click. You'll find someone who talks the way you know how to listen and teaches you the ways that you are best at learning. So there's tons of different content out there. You guys just find what works for you. Um, like one of the ones we like to use is Think Media. Yes, they're They've amazing. They've taught us so much of our technical side of things, so much about audio and video editing um just a huge shout out to them honestly because they they really helped us yeah that's actually a really good channel if you are trying to start even a youtube channel if you're trying to start a podcast any of those forms of media they'll teach you like from start to finish uh one of the biggest things which i'll throw down a uh, link in the description that we learned was well Lindsay and i don't have very much time so we wanted to learn how to edit fast so i just put in edit fast on Premiere Pro, because that's the software we use, and Think Media came right up, and mm -hmm. I, that's that they're one like a, video. They're like Twelve minute videos, they're so quick, so easy, and they get straight to the point. And I, we we cut our editing time in half yeah. just by that easy. one video. Easy. So yeah, consume other podcasts. Um, also just consume co for entertainment value. I mean, the the only reason I even started my channel is because I was. I, I have favorite YouTubers, and I saw the quality of production they had, and I was like, man, 
I wish, you know, I'm going to do that one day. And then now, and now I appreciate it even more that I have done it. I see the quality that they have and I'm yeah. like, how? Yeah. So. Yeah. How do you, do? yeah. And now that we do edit, you know, if you, if you get into this yourself and you start editing, you'll go back and watch other podcasts and you'll see, oh, they made a cut there. Oh, you know, that's a different audio format. Like, you know, just different things like that. Like you'd be surprised how much you learn just by, you know, doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. How did they get those graphics in there? Yeah. 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 And then uh, with that, I mean, consume other podcasts, but also consume other media. So, I mean, this is a media business. Um, Whatever you're podcasting on, whether it's Spotify or you're doing audio only or maybe you're doing audio and videos or you're on YouTube, maybe you're on Twitch, whatever, whatever media you are on, I very highly recommend you to try to branch out and consume all media. So because it's a it's a constantly changing thing you know 10 years ago we didn't have tiktok it was was 10 years ago myspace was it facebook you were not okay were you on the media 10 years ago how old am i nah (laughs) (laughs) what was i doing 10 years ago (laughs) um i think snapchat was just becoming like a real big thing maybe about like nine eight nine years ago Okay. Because I was a freshman in high school when Snapchat started. 2013. Yeah. 2013, 2014. Okay. Okay. So Snapchat. Snapchat and, you know, Instagram had already been a huge thing by then. If anything, Instagram was starting to die down when Snapchat picked up. Uh, Facebook has, you know, been here. Um, I mean, see, example, guys. Yeah. (laughs) See how it changes. It changes every couple of years. So just if you become comfortable on multiple medias, then anytime something changes or updates, it'll be easier to transform to the next one because as someone who's old, <laughs> I got stuck on Facebook. And then I, and I, I never used, branched out. <laughs> yeah, I use Instagram and Snapchat, but I have yet to get on Twitter. And Vine was never my thing. No, like, either. no. I mean, Vine's not around anymore. Yeah, 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 true. And now it's TikTok. And TikTok is so difficult for it's me to use. It's a headache, yes. honestly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, just consume as much knowledge as possible about this entire industry. All right. So we have step one, be patient. Step two, consume as much as possible. Uh, step three, especially if you're going to do any type of podcast where you're giving someone either advice or how to or your knowledge i was about to say outside you're of opinions <laughs> history or yeah. you're trying to give facts the news research research is so <laughs> important oh my god that was one thing that we kind of ran into is like we had all these amazing ideas so for many. episodes and then we just kind of threw a like a basic layout on the screen and we're like okay we'll just read from that and go and we would find ourselves mid recording an episode having to stop and look up facts yes accurate. stop and verify ourselves yeah. Or the worst one is yes. after everything's all said and recording, done, you know, you're done, you're editing, and then you realize all the mistakes you made while you were talking. But, you know, you've already finished, you're, you've recorded, you're editing now, so then you got to go through and put in little snippets like, oh, I meant to say this here, or I meant to say that there. Like, Yeah, because, you know, I think I know everything whenever I'm just like spitting it off and we're just talking. I'm yeah. just like, you know, I've I know about throwing dates. a microphone in front of yeah. me. I'm like, I know what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> And then, yeah, one of our biggest mistakes so far is we were doing LGBT history. So there's a timeline, there's actual dates, there's facts that you need to get right. And we said... We um, started the colonies in 1776 or yeah, something it was like that. <laughs> <laughs> something about 1776. And I was like, yeah, that's when, you know, the colonies were first started. And then I go on and didn't ever, re- none of, neither one of us realized that mistake until yeah. afterwards. I think the next day I woke up and I was like, I don't know why it hit me, but it was just like, oh, <laughs> your brain 1776 was like, bro. is when we declared independence. <laughs> colonies have been set up. There was no independence to declare if there's no oh, colonies. So, so I immediately had to pull up my phone and text Denise, hey, I need you to change this real quick because I'm going to look so dumb. Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. I'm going to laugh when that's not even correct, too. So we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, you get our point. Research. Research. Before you talk, you know, facts and things that you need to be accurate about research Research. it it takes it doesn't take very long um one of the things that we do is we have like a filming day and then we have a research day they're two completely separate days so Mm -hmm. we have one day just dedicated to building whatever episode we're doing and Mm -hmm. researching everything for it yeah yeah it's the best to just get it all out of the way before you start recording that way there's a lot less cuts to make in the end too because if you're having to stop and look up a fact and then cut back in you know 
that's that's work you got to do later on. Yeah, and that's also how things can go wrong technically. But yeah. So fourth tip we could probably give out then. Uh, this one, is, in my opinion, is pretty important. Um, start your podcast with a topic about like um, of something that you love or something that you're really interested in, uh, something that you're passionate about. It's uh, so much easier to get involved and be committed to doing something when you yourself are interested in it as well. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Uh, step three basically feeds into step four. I mean, they're they're very much closely related because especially if you're talking about a serious topic, you need to be accurate. You need to be able to research. If you're researching a topic you don't love, you're not going to really um, care if you're accurate, right? Right. Um, but yeah, so the the topic that you pick, whatever you want to do, just realize that you will you will have to do some deep dives into the topic that you pick a lot. So make sure it's something that you really want to learn. And I got to be honest, I've really enjoyed learning about LGBT topics. Yeah, you year. know, it's something that, I mean, I've been a part of this community for quite a few years now. And holy cow, I'm a little embarrassed about how little I knew about the history of us. Yes. Uh, the best advice I can give you is if you if you love the topic that you're talking about, you're doing research, you're prepared, um, you've done deep dives and whatever you chose to, to speak about or spiel, um, the podcast will actually flow a lot better because obviously – your audience is going to see that you enjoy this topic, that you've done the research for them. That yeah, you, you know. know what you're talking about. Exactly. And then all of those come back on your end, too, that you know what you're talking about. You like what you're talking about. So the words just kind of flow a little bit more naturally. Yep. It's a win-win all around, honestly. Agreed. Agreed. And speaking of the flow of the podcast, tip five, research and be prepared. But it's good to have some surprises when you're cer certain things that aren't, you know, completely scripted because it's set in stone. Yeah. Yeah. A little wiggle room here and there. When you're doing a podcast, most of the time the audience is there. They might be there for information, but they're also there to just like hear you guys talk. They're they're sitting in the room with you. They usually if you're listening to a podcast, you just pop it in your ear your ear and you start cleaning or some people work out some people go on walks so they're they're kind of engaging with you so it's good to have some type of conversation that isn't a hundred percent scripted yeah. right like uh, if any of you guys are familiar with our previous episodes one thing that we do at the end of the episode is we'll uh, read some coming out stories when we first started the uh, podcast we um picked the coming out stories together we verified them together and then it kind of got to like it was so scripted. It sounded like we were robots just going over the same thing week in, week out. So we switched it to where we don't tell each other whichever coming out story that we're going to read anymore. We each pick our own and then we read it to each other. So that way, like when I'm reading something, Denise is a little bit more engaged in what I'm saying, which also engages the audience that's watching because it's not you're not just listening to us lecture. We're actually having a conversation. Yeah, because like she's saying, it gets really robotic, especially on some of those episodes where we're doing like some type of history lesson. Because fun fact, me and Lindsay don't like homework. Homework is not our, our <laughs> strong suit. If we could just sit down and press record and talk, That'd I think great. that would be golden. That's what it really was supposed to be. But then we, wanted, <laughs> we wanted to give, you know, we wanted to give accurate facts, information guys, and, and info. And, and, yes, yeah. yeah. And broaden your horizons. So our horizons had to be broadened, but that requires us to do a book report every week. <laughs> it's back, I'm back in school. Like I have homework again. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, for some of our episodes, it actually does get a little robotic when we're going through the history or the timeline or anything that we're like literally writing a book report and reading it in front and of you guys. Yep. Yep. Um, so having that aspect where we are just, I'm sharing a coming out story that Lindsay doesn't know. So she gets to honestly react and she's sharing one. So I get to honestly react. It engages our conversation and makes it to where we're having fun and you can see mm, it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot easier to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, well, that sums up our uh, five facts. Um, those of you guys watching the video, we'll go ahead and list those again right here for a refresher. But um, now I think we're going to jump into stuff that may be a little bit more relatable. Like we're going to share a couple different of our experience with you guys um, and just ask each other um, a couple of questions. And um, some of these questions we we have yet to ask each other, actually. So you're going to get some uh, <laughs> some pretty raw and honest answers yeah, from yeah. us. I'm really good at raw, right? <laughs> um, 
That's so, what she said. <laughs> so uh, just for you guys out there knowing, uh, me and Lindsay just hit our one year anniversary. Yeah. We started whoop this whoop. podcast on December 29th, 2021. Yeah. And I actually looked it up. That was uh, when we first recorded the first episode that worked. Yeah. Because I know because I had some uh, Snapchat memories pop up okay. about halfway through December where we were recording, but those weren't actually our no, we fucked episode. up. Yeah, hardcore. Guys, a lot. Y'all, it's it's rough. Like, I'm, we're talking multiple takes. <laughs> multiple yeah. takes. Yeah, we had a lot of, because we don't, I don't understand video recording equipment or lighting or any of that, especially not at first. Like, we didn't know what we were doing. And uh, we went into this um, podcast with the concept, literally, if an eight-year-old can do it, why can't we? Exactly. Right. Easy, right? They have videos. So now. that, I'm here to tell you now, that eight-year-old has some... Older people behind the scenes helping them out because Either at our age, <laughs> yeah, at our age, we couldn't figure that out. And Denise works with like computers for a living. Sure do. And this was rough. <laughs> yeah. 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 We started off with uh, three different cameras, um, oh a lighting gosh. equipment that uh, her best friend bought, you know, on Amazon with, you know, the, like the red and the blue and the yellow and the filters. the yellow and you and... got to like, you know, match them up and bounce them off of each other. Yes, and yes. I don't, you, you guys can probably tell. You've watched enough of our videos. Um, I'm pale. Lindsay is Guys, like, like the light just, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm transparent. Like, yeah. like it's, it's pretty rough. So trying to get the correct lighting that bounces off my skin that doesn't make me look physically ill. It was a task. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then just off the, I mean, the lighting was, was one thing. And we were given clear instructions. Like, he left us, like, a portfolio. Oh, with, tape like, on the ground of yeah. where all of them go. Like, it, it looked really intense in here. Like, it was a whole, like, TV recording studio. Yeah, sure was that we didn't know how to work. At all. Um. So that was an issue. And then the, the three different cameras and camera <laughs> angles was also a big issue because our first episode we realized that's why that's why we recorded our first episode twice yeah. is um we didn't realize that one of the angles uh was done by just a regular a regular camera like an of, actual like photo taking yeah, camera that takes video so i was like fuck you know this is perfect yeah let's do it we set it up we get it all done film for like at least 45 minutes like we're we're in the thick of it and we realized that it only films 10 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. We found out that, you know, certain cameras, you know, they, they don't have enough memory to re to be able to allow it. So that first that first episode, 20, <laughs> so the first one that worked for us was back in December 29th. That's our anniversary. Yep. Uh, we actually did post for the first time in December. So okay. it was like right after that. Yeah. Our anniversary. Yeah. So um, just to tell the audience, like, what, what made you want to dive into a podcast on the <laughs> internet? So anyone who knows me personally knows that I'm not a big internet fan. I don't, I don't really do YouTube. I don't listen to podcasts. Um, I'm not on Twitter. I mean, I'm barely on Instagram. Yeah. Um, it's just you know, social media and putting my face out there like that isn't necessarily for me. But I know we had been talking about maybe me, you, and your wife partnering up and doing kind of like a traveling yep. uh, podcast because sure we, were, we were camping a lot at yes. that time that this was happening. So but then the, was, that just never became a thing and it kind of fell through. And then you approached me with the idea to do this and just like how passionate you were about it kind of like fed into me and I was just like, you know, this this could be a really cool idea. Like, you know, when I was that age and still kind of in the closet, just starting to like step out, like I would have loved um, uh, some kind of podcast or some kind of just show to watch that kind of gave me advice and told me about some of the things that I was going to face and all the struggles. And I just thought like how much I could have used that, who else out there could need it as well. So yeah. I think that was a, a, the biggest thing that drew me into doing this podcast. Oh, good. Yeah, because that was similar to my experience as well. I've I've always wanted to do something where um, where basically I'm I'm being the person that I wish I would have been around whenever I was coming out. There right. You go. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely want to do just something in that area, whether it was volunteering or it was starting a podcast, doing a YouTube channel, whatever it was. I just I wanted to do something to kind of give back because I feel like now we are loads ahead of what we were you know maybe five ten years ago where i was closeted and i didn't i wasn't able to 
be out and about. It sucked. I felt like I couldn't be myself around my friends either because as much as they knew I was gay, I, they weren't they weren't used to any of the changes that I wanted to make with my appearance. Yeah, you present yourself as a certain person for majority of your life, and then all of a sudden you change it around. It kind of not only does it shock you, but it shocks the people around you sure as well. Does. So you kind of you're in some kind of um some hot water for a while there, and it it seems a little scary, but. At that day and age, I wish I had someone there to tell me that, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, it's going to get easier over the long run. You know, people come around. It's just kind of a shock to them. You know, just give them a second. Because a lot of people in our community, and I know if you're watching this, you might be in this boat. You 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 don't you, you start hating yourself for being different. And you're not knowing why you're different. You don't know why you have these feelings. It sucks because you're not normal. I mean, all these thoughts come through your head and, and it sucks being alone. So, I mean, just being able to being able to create a space where, I mean, guys, I mean, you're free to comment and just tell about your stories. I mean, I, I welcome that. Just having a space yeah. where someone's going to tell you, hey, it's OK to be yourself, be you. Um, that was very important to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, that being said, like we started this uh, podcast with, you know, that goal in mind. And so to achieve that goal, we set what we thought at the time were small, achievable goals to get there. Yeah. Um, smaller. Think think smaller. Just like our, our original goal was an episode a week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For someone who has a full time job, um, um, yeah. you know, family on the side, just things happen in life. To produce an episode a week is pretty difficult. Oh, yeah. To I mean, say the least. You just, you have to, doing an episode a week probably is difficult for just a single person who is, has their own podcast. They don't have a partner um, or their own YouTube channel or their own Twitch, whatever it is. They don't have a partner. It's just you. It's it's difficult to do with a full-time job because you have to you have to do the producing of the episode where you're filming and recording, maybe getting your you're filming some B-roll or whatever you do, um, looking up sound effects. And then you also have the post-production where you're editing. editing. Yes. And yeah. editing takes a lot longer than you really think it does. Yeah. And not only are you editing that source but you also have to do a bunch of things on the back end like start an email or start a um an account in whatever uh platform you're deciding to go to you have to come up with a logo you yeah, have you to... have to pick what editing software you want to use because sure. there's tons out there and then with each episode you also need to think of you not need to think of a decent title and you have to create a thumbnail for depending mm -hmm. on if you're on youtube or you're on tw um, twitch so yeah you got to create a uh, picture that matches that episode, but then you also have to have a description. So, like, there's a lot in the background side of things other than just sitting down and recording an episode. Yeah, and that's for one person. So it was diff it's difficult to do with one person a full-time job. Mm -hmm. Two people. Two people. And both full-time jobs. Yeah, because you got to factor in, you know, traveling to get to somewhere. Y'all having a day where you can both meet up at the same time and allow a certain number of hours to get this done. Like, mix it with your full-time schedule. It's, you know, it's not an easy task to do. No. It so was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, I think that was one of our biggest letdowns, I think, when we first started is, like, we... Yeah. Yeah, no, we, I had to go really... into therapy. Let's just say <laughs> it was, that it was. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> you were also keep in mind, guys. Denise said, "Hey, let's start a podcast while she's planning a wedding." Accurate. So there is just she had and working a full time job and working a part time job. Yeah, I did. There have was two jobs, yeah. there was a lot on her plate. So I was like, when she when you asked me, I was like, I mean, I'm down. Are you sure you're good? Well, I kept hearing these people who I look up to on YouTube. They're just like, it doesn't matter what happens. Just start. Just start. Just, just start. Just yes. right now. Start. And I'm like, okay, I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was difficult. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it, it uh, producing anything takes time. And you also want, I mean, I'm a perfectionist. So, I don't like to put out an episode if I don't think that the audio is good. We'll re-record. We had to re-record this episode. <laughs> yeah, full disclaimer, guys. <laughs> this is take two. <laughs> yeah, because unfortunately, the technical difficulties, that's also another thing you have to think about is just the equipment you're using. I highly recommend getting actual 
reliable equipment and learning how to use it doing so a test run. So that's the big one right there. Do a test run. Don't just jump in and record yeah. it. Because we got we got a really, really nice like audio recording device that her mm-hmm. wife gave her. So excited to use it that we were just like, ah, new episode, season two, episode one. We're throwing it in there. Record the whole episode. And we realized that that uh, recording device, we didn't set it up 100% correctly. So the whole audio was choppy, parts were missing, there was gaps, and it was just it's just frustrating because you know we're, we thought we we were over it, we did it, we, yeah. we finally have some good devices, and then still wasn't that. So get you some really good re- recording equipment, and then research that equipment before you decide to just go ahead and bring it in and do test runs because that's test important. Runs, I've, yeah. I think what we are now learning, and I'm going to say this on record so that way it sticks, (laughs) but anytime we've gotten a new piece of equipment, something's gone wrong Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. that first thing, whether it was using, you know, a whole bunch of different phones or lighting or whatever it is. We've had issues with that, you know, using it at first. Uh, These mics, when we first started recording, I noticed that the sound was really low, right? The mic behind us, which was our first mic that was... Very reliable mic, really good, but not with two people using no, it's it. A, it's a phenomenal one person mic. Like you can get right in there, but like two people using it, you got sounds coming at it from the side and it just it it wasn't able to give the quality of sound that I really wanted to. And so we upgraded to this, but then there was a learning curve with this, with the sound being low. Same mm-hmm. thing with the recorder. There were and some the driver choppy. issues. Yeah. 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 The first time we uh used the editing uh software, there we um deleted things, we corrupted audio files. There's yep. just there's a lot of things on the computer end of things. Too. like ch- the transferring of files um i can't be in charge of that y'all <laughs> something goes wrong every time i try to help on the technical technical side of things um i mess up something i've noticed yeah well even i mean even just technical th- just equipment in general we we're working with what we just have around on hand besides the mic and the audio recorder that we i just got for christmas i got these for i think a valentine's or an anniversary gift i'm not sure which one um but We're working with my old laptop that crashes. All the time. All the time. (laughs) But I mean, I'm honestly really impressed with your laptop because we we put her laptop through so much. And like she said, it is an older laptop. And so whenever you're editing an hour long video that has, you know, video and audio, multiple files, there's just there's a lot going on. So I'm surprised that it's hung on. True. True. I do remember we put it through a lot one time. We recorded a video because, again, you need to learn frames per second. And my phone is able to record in Ultra HD. 4K. It's able to record in 4K. That's what I meant. Um, so it's able to record in 4K. A lot of pixels. A lot of memory. So I remember one uh, podcast we recorded. Normally, our, my podcasts are like maybe four gigs, maybe six gigs. This one was like 35 <laughs> my computer could not handle it. It was too much. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, wow, we can make the video quality so much better. Let's do it. Well, yeah, the phone can handle it. But can the laptop? Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. So lots of lots of mistakes, guys. We've made a, we've made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. 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 Technical issues, scheduling. Scheduling, lighting, sound, audio, all that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you you. Ask it, we've probably made that mistake. Yeah, so that's why biggest advice, Le- knowledge, learn. Yeah. Which, to be honest, I mean, you're, the first couple podcast episodes that you um, decide to go through, you're going, you're, you're going to suck at. Like, yeah, it's, it's gonna I mean, it's gonna be bad. You're, you gotta start somewhere. Yeah. Honestly, no one's good at something the first time you do it, unless you're like a prodigy. And by all means, if that happens to you, go get a job in that field because yeah. Yeah. you'll pay your way. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so as far as podcasting goes, what was the biggest surprise when, when doing this podcast? How much work behind the scenes it was going to be. Accurate. Oh, like, wow. I'm talking like mouth <laughs> wide open. Like, you mean I got to do what? For and how long? An eight year old can do it. Yeah, that, that was her thing. <laughs> she said that how many times when we first started recording? And I was like, that is one smart eight year old. Oh, because man. <laughs> did you ever watch that game show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Not. No, no, yeah, yeah, I yeah. I was, I'm, I'm not. No, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those, those fifth graders would beat me out. How old are fifth graders? Eleven, ten, twelve. 
12. Because you're 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 a teenager 10. before you go into middle school. Like mm-hmm. eighth grade ish is when you hit like 13. No way. Yeah. Because okay, because I was born early. I was born in September. I got my. I was 14. Okay, so 13, 14, you're in middle school. Yeah, that's what I... Okay, yeah. so it's and around... And then 14... So fifth grade's what, like 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, yeah, something like that? Yeah, some, somewhere around fifth okay. grade. No, fifth grade would be, yeah, 11. 11? Probably 11, 10, 11. Okay, yeah. Well, if y'all can start a podcast in fifth grade, uh, you you need to be doing... So by the time things. you're, you know, in your teenage <laughs> years, you'll have one heck of a following and... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it it was a lot of work. Yeah. I didn't expect that either. I I honestly, I remember telling Lindsay lots, yeah, probably a lot of times where I was like, I want to make it to where our podcast, we just come in, we sit down, we press record, and we're good. Good. We have yet to do that. It's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's been Fuck. a year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think with every day we're getting closer, I will say today was nice. I mean, it is take two. Yeah. But we did really just kind of come in and sit down and record for the most part today. That's true. That's true. For the most part. Yeah. yeah. One day. One day. It'll happen. I, I make it a go- I'm going to manifest this before the end year. We are going to walk in through that door, sit down. It'll be five minutes and we're going to press record. Boom. I hope. Ready. Do you think people um, rehearse? Some, some script. Yeah. There's okay. some people who literally just script out their entire thing. They'll rehearse um, it and then film it. And then, yeah. And then there's some people who are just that good off the cuff mm. that aren't just able to go. And I envy those people. Yeah. That's, that's, that's rough. That's not. I can come in, sit down thinking I know what I'm going to say. And then I won't even say that. I no, I. Because I'm completely different. You will be talking <laughs> and I will know what my talking point <laughs> exactly. is next. And then it'll come to my talking yep. point and then yep. just blank. It's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have these awkward silences that it's we like, have to go through and edit. I swear oh, I just so had this in my mind. I knew what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you want to act interested in what the other person's saying while also like keeping up with Jurgen. Yeah. It's rough. It's a, like a planned conversation. It's yeah. just unnatural. It's It's a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to get used to. Yeah, that's another thing that was unexpected or that you just have to learn. You also, you have to learn how to be comfortable in front of a camera. Yeah. And that took a while. I think our first episodes were really <laughs> awkward. Actually, I, I know they were. Who was it that gave us the advice that was like, y'all can look at each other more? Like, have a conversation. Because we're just like, we have to look in the camera. Like, our eyes did not move from the camera in front of us. I don't remember who said it, but it was just like, y'all are talking to each other, like turn to each other, have a conversation. I was like, oh, that's so much more natural. Yeah. Yeah. And that that actually made a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a learning curve of its own, honestly, to because I mean, guys, we're we're sitting in an empty room. Well, I mean, there's stuff on the wall, but like and then there's a camera right there. That's it. That's that's all that's happening. And in we're here. pretending that there's someone listening. Or we're right? pretending there's multiple people. Yeah, listening. true. Yes, true. we're having a full blown yeah. like podcast. But I wonder what the animals think when they see us. Like, what's? Yeah, like who are they talking who are they to? Talk- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so learning things, learning curves. Those were difficult because yeah, we had to learn obviously the technical side. We had to learn software. Um, but one of the things that I really, like I said before, I was really in, excited to learn or I didn't expect it, but I was really happy that we learned was I the LGBTQ stories that I got to to um, research and then obviously share with you guys like the Stonewall. Stonewall was huge. Yeah. Um, I knew a little bit about Stonewall, but we had to. I think we researched Stonewall for three different episodes. So yeah, we had to we know at shit. least at least talked about it in three different yeah. episodes. Yeah. Or people people from uh, I feel a little ashamed to say this, but I didn't know very much about trans history. But now I know people like Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, I know what Star was. I, right. You know, right. I, yeah. Like I've always, you know, been a huge ally mm-hmm. of the trans community, but you know, I yeah, I'm ashamed to say that I didn't know I yeah, didn't know much about either. it either. Like it just you know, they don't teach it in schools. So when they don't teach it in schools, you it's on you to go out and do the research. And I mean, I don't know of anyone else out there, but I, I don't like to just do research for fun. Who does that? 
And we had to. <laughs> Even like simple things. Like we did a episode where we were talking about like uh, LGBT, lesbian. Actually, it wasn't even LGBT. It was lesbian terms. And <laughs> that's as actually to this day is one of my favorite episodes. Really? Yes. Really? We're going to have to do so it again. I had so much fun doing that, that episode. Fun. We'll have to do it again, but where you come with 10 words I that you don't actually, think I know. You talked about thinking about what oh. you're going to say next. <laughs> I was literally just going to say that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do it like, you know, do it where we're reading off to each like, other. Do you know what? Did you know what? This means, yeah, okay. yeah, like yeah the game. game of flats, guys. Like that's <laughs> that's a term that has stuck with me. A game of flats. <laughs> I say good. that so often, it's not even. Funny. See, mine is Barbie because I remember looking at your face when I asked you if you had a Barbie <laughs> on what is it? Global internet that we have. <laughs> yeah, Denise's uh, one of Denise's tips that were in that vibe <laughs> was the surprises because Denise <laughs> loves to blindside me with. The most far out there questions. And I'm like, my mom watches this. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that. I, re I really get like a satisfaction of watching the blood drain it's, from Lindsay's yeah, face. It's rough, mm -hmm. man. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, speaking of that, I mean, on top of the terms and everything, I've also learned a lot about Lindsay, which I, yeah. I, I was really, it was really nice. I've learned about your background. Like, all right. If you meet another LGBT person, usually the, what comes up in conversation are two things. It's like, how did you come out? And when did you first know you were when gay? When did you know? Yeah, yeah. right. Or yeah. when did you first kiss a girl is also pretty common. Um, so, you know, I kind of knew that story a bit, but we went in depth. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. I learned a lot more about like your family dynamic and how you grew up. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, true. I think it definitely like rooted our friendship a little bit more. I agree. Yeah. 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 Starting a podcast with someone, just so you're aware, guys, if you decide to have a partner, you're starting a business. It is. Yeah. And a therapy session and someone, <laughs> some sorts, right? Yeah. 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 So make sure you like that person for sure because you're gonna you're gonna be spending a lot of time with them whether yes. you want to or not. It's 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 happening right? it's between happening. editing days, between passing off a laptop, seeing each other and passing just to like exchange something or sitting here for an hour and talking to nobody over and over again. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, at least like we do about I would say consistently consistently about once every other week. I'd yeah. say we get a nice solid recording session. So. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so I mean, is there anything that in our podcast that you would want if you if we could do it completely over what would you change if you could change anything um you know i don't think i would necessarily change too much um i may have uh done a little bit more research about everything before we just kind of jumped right into it accurate because yeah. like we got this idea and denise was like well you don't you don't have a job right now do you want to just start it and i was like yeah let's start it so we went over set up all the stuff and was like record that's what I thought it all took. <laughs> that's that's all that's all we ever knew. Like you just yeah. you just set up some microphones, make sure that your audio is going into something, and then that your phone or camera is recording. Yeah, and that's it. No, yeah. So, and then plus with you, you know, with the wedding and everything happening, I think if we would have kind of postponed it, maybe a month or two planned it out a little bit better, maybe got like five solid episodes of planning underneath our belt. Yeah. That way we could just record, 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 figuring out editing. And then once yeah. we figured it out, it was like a bam, 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 posting kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. I think having like a solid five episode ideas that we had already yeah laid out would have been would have been great. Yeah. I think we were just we were just excited to start. Yeah. It was just like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Which in of itself is not a bad thing, guys. I mean, we we worked I mean, out worked those out. kinks. Yeah. It took. Yeah, it took a year. And I. I am very proud. I mean, for those who are big YouTubers out there who think this number is horrible, maybe. But I'm very proud that we officially, it's starting right now, or at this time of this recording, we have 49 subscribers. Yeah. Which is more than our family or anybody like, yeah, of our Yeah, parents. I don't really know 49 people. Yeah, you know? so the fact that there is actually even one person out there that has that wants to stick with us enough to where you're actually subscribing get, yeah. and getting yeah. alerts and our videos are going to pop up on their feeds consistently. Thank you. Yeah, that's 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 awesome guys. You yeah. know, it's and the fact that we've um we have what five videos now in the thousands of for views. Yeah. Like that's yeah. like we were told that, you know, you weren't hit views like that until you have, you know, at least like 40 episodes out there. It might take 2 years. I mean, one of our first videos to hit 1000 views was only like 5 months in. To yeah. our posting. So, I mean, we, a couple of our videos randomly 
blew up. And yeah. Was, yeah, it was, it was really random. Like, and not the ones the that most, we thought were going yeah, to. Yeah, they were the most unexpected ones, yeah. too. Like, I didn't expect college. Like, yeah, that was, guys, that was a video that we were like, what are we going to record this week? And we're like, well, I mean, we're getting ready to go back to school. I guess we could do something about that. Like, that was just kind of like a, a pretty get put together L- Friendliest <laughs> LGBT colleges. Yeah, yeah. just put it out there. Yeah. I mean, that episode taught me a lot, though, too, actually. I had no idea how many colleges out there, like, have oh, yeah. openly anti-LGBTQ policies. Accurate. Yeah, there's like, a lot. open. They're so public about it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's very actually unfortunate because me and Lindsay, are, we have a very good support group of friends and oh, you know, yeah. our, our families are decently supportive of of the lifestyle. So having we don't get very many haters in our in our close circle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, it's just it boggles my or I just I forget that there's spaces or places out there, That's even not institutions okay. yeah. Yeah, where it's not it's not accepted um so 2023 we got a new year we got a new season of born this gay um what do you want to get better at in our podcast this year well me i'm actually pretty proud uh i'm pretty comfortable with video editing now there's still a lot to learn so i'm definitely 2023 i'm going to i definitely want to learn how to do um like the pan outs and stuff like Mm -hmm. that so there's certain video editing things i want to do um but i want also i i would love for us to do something that's kind of different so if you, you know if you wanted to I don't know, take a, a course at TCC about lighting or about audio oh, or if you yeah, want to do a little bit of know. like educational yeah, behind the scenes. Something things. or improv. Guys talk about homework. Yeah, that's homework. true. Homework. But I mean, it's it's homework that's going to ultimately give you guys better value. There, and going to make go. it easier yeah. for us to do this because then we'll have a little bit more understanding. So anything that makes this easier. In the long run is I'm all for way it. worth it. So yeah. yeah. I definitely want to do that. Um, so learn a little bit more. So yeah, you know, if you want, to, we need to, yeah, we need to yeah. do something. I mean, um, the way I live is you're supposed to learn something new every day. So. Accurate, yeah. Um, and then I would love if we were to get some guests on this Ooh, podcast, guys. I don't know if y'all see this gap we have right here. This has been a thing since we started. We can touch knee. Me and Lindsay used to touch knees in our little <laughs> bitty table at the. First if y'all episodes, go back and watch yeah. some of our first episodes, we're at this EDB little circle table, and me and Denise were sitting on top of each other. Yeah. Like I got some long legs, guys. I'm five ten. These these suckers stretch out. So and you know. Denise is just all up in my space. Let's bring those memories back. Let's get someone here. We yeah, can touch just knees. Everybody right bump here. together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be nice and close. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think yeah. it'd be pretty cool to have a guest on here. Yeah, because I mean, the basis of our podcast is obviously LGBT topics, but we end it with a coming out story. So I would love if we. A live coming out story? Oh, amazing. Oh, what? Yes. So one day, hopefully, guys, I, I hope we can bring that to you. Yeah. Um, that would be great for us. Do you have any other future plans that you would you would like to do? Future plans. Um I think I think you got mine with the the bringing the guest on board. Um I wouldn't mind doing a couple field trips. Oh, that would be would nice. Would you guys watch some field trip episodes if like, you know, we went somewhere, did something? It's very broad right now. But. So I'm going to manifest it right now. If we hit and this is a big number. <laughs> this is a huge number that we're not even close to. But if we ever hit 1 million subscribers. Holy cow. I said it was a huge a, I number. had it was a big number. You can't start with a 1000. <laughs> Thousand, we can do other things too. Okay. But this is why this is big. If we hit a million subscribers, I say we reward ourselves by going to Dinosaur. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She, she said it. <laughs> she agreed. It's Guys, on camera. So, I mean, if y'all want to help us get there, every <laughs> subscriber counts. Just, Just hit go that ahead subscribe and hit. button. It's so easy. Guys, exit out of full screen real quick. Go up there. Bing. Ring that bell. It's easy. And then go back to full screen because. I know we look good, and we'll get you into Dinah. I'll yes. I'll wear a little you know a little pen with the the camera and everything. And if they have things with recording or whatever, but oh yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, we'll find a way. Yeah, we'll find a way. Yeah. But yeah, in the meantime, I was thinking like maybe some um, you know, camping how tos is one oh, that yeah. we've always talked about. We we love to go camping, um, and I I need I need to go to Stonewall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that needs to that. be that needs to be a thing. I know okay. you've you've gone, so I got gotta catch up. I went, but I didn't get to appreciate it. It was for my bachelorette party. Yeah, guys. so it was just partying. That was, that's yeah, what that was. and I was with a whole bunch of straight 
introverts mm. and it was a very crowded bar so as soon as i walked in i was like oh we're not gonna be able to stay <laughs> this yeah. is gonna be maybe a drink if yeah. not just kind of taking in the environment so it was like an in and out but yeah we got to go spend some time there i no. agree that would no. be great so future plans hopefully maybe by the end of this year but you know if, yeah. if things go a little slowly i'm okay with the slow build the fact that i even have 49 of you i'm very thankful that's crazy so, guys no, yeah that is no. so crazy yeah um so with that, with the forty nine in mind, I mean, when do you consider this podcast successful? Like when? when is it? Um, I mean, one of the things that I like to live by is if you if you have some kind of knowledge or something to share with the world, as long as one person hears you, or as long as one person like understands what you're trying to say, you're successful. Mm. The fact that we've had multiple videos with a thousand views yeah the fact that we have 49 subscribers that means at least you know a handful of people out there are enjoying our content that mm -hmm. are listening to what we have to say that's we've, we've been successful in okay. my mind i know yeah. i completely agree with that there is two um moments that happen that just that made it feel like okay all the work that we've done it's, it's, I mean, it's showing yeah. yeah we could those two comments made me want to continue but those two um, events that happened literally made it to where, okay, we if we stopped now, I'm very proud of what we've accomplished, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we're not going to stop. Uh, <laughs> no, wait, wait. we're just getting the ball rolling <laughs> This here. is great. We, me and yeah. Lindsay have a lot of fun. We so. do, actually. We do. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is something that I look forward to me throughout too. the weeks, me actually. Too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those two events that happened was first, uh, we had a friend of yours who we popped up on her timeline. And she reached out to us. It was our um, learning how to be gay and Christian at the same time, right? Yes. Yeah. So when yeah. she commented on that and said that that would provide value, that she liked it, I was like, that's, that's exactly crazy. And this is this is like a an a um like a long time family friend, and it's not someone that I have contact with at all within the last like mm -hmm. decade, actually. Um, and the fact that she reached out, well, she actually reached out to my mom to reach out to me to tell me that she found a lot of value in the episode that we had posted. And I was just like, I didn't even know that she watched us like that. Like how, when, how did she find us? Like, and that the fact that she sat there and watched too, and then took the time to let me know, like that was that was really cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. So that was instance one. And then the second one was we actually got a comment. So if you, I responded to you by saying you were our first comment. So if you're out there and you're still listening, your comment saying that uh, you you really enjoyed it was our episode where we were giving online advice. Online like if you advice. wanted to, yeah, if you want to start yeah. an online profile in the lesbian world. And she says, I'm like, um, I can't believe this doesn't have more views. I appreciate you. Yes, that you have no idea. I to this day go back and look at that comment. Yeah. Like that is our, it's our first ever comment and what an awesome positive comment it was. Like, yes. Yes. so huge shout out to you. If you're still watching, we really appreciate it because honestly, you'd probably outside of the people we know, you sounds like you're, you're our first fan. Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. great. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I mean, guys, go start a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the long run, yeah, it's got bumps and roses or bumps in the road, but in the long run, it was well worth it. And something that I plan on keeping doing. So, uh, yes. Yeah. You know, we just got through the holidays. Yeah. And um, one of the things that I actually wanted to share with you guys that I came across, because apparently this has been a thing for a few years now. Yeah. But um, it's called Trans Santa. And I found I found this page on Instagram. And uh, what it is, it's they, they pop up around the holidays and all of the um, the trans youth all the way up to, I think, 24 years is where they cap out their um, send in dates. But you can send in letters explaining the situation that you're in and then just a handful of things that you might want for Christmas. And what they do is that they post that on their Instagram, which has hundreds of thousands of followers, and they hook it up with your Amazon wishlist account. So then you go and you click on this person's letter and it will bring you straight to their Amazon wishlist account. So you can send anonymous gifts or you can include a note in these gifts. And just, I've, I mean, I've seen people who are, you know, at their age gap, 24 years old. Um, you know, you see people who are just going through everything in life that they could be going through, you know, homeless, abusive parents. Um, just, wow. just really awful things that they just really don't have anything. So, you know, there's people who are just asking for clothes or soap or binders and books for school. Um, and then you also have parents who are single parents who have really young 
um, transgender children. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking like five, six years old and they're, they're coming out and you know, these parents are super supportive, but they don't necessarily have the money to get them gender affirming clothing or, you know, the right, the toys that they want to play with or whatnot. So you'll even have parents who submit for their kids and their, you know, there'll be little sites for the kids now. But I thought it was um, really important for me to highlight this episode because, you know, we're, we're, we're past Christmas, but they had so many, um, letters mailed in this year that they're still posting and they still need those trans Santas out there to go make these people's lives, honestly. That's awesome, yeah, guys. Yeah, like that is by far one of the coolest things I've ever come across on Instagram. We'll have to, with, when me and Lindsay get some money eventually, like our when we're our future selves and, you know, the money's oh, banking yeah. and giving back, you know, you know, yeah, giving yeah, back we'll to the to community. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, guys. Yeah, go check out Trans Santa. That's, that's awesome. We'll, I guess I have to link that down in the yes, description. Yes, I guess we'll as have well. to link that down in the description. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I guess with more LGBT news, I found out that Elliot Page wrote a book. Oh yes, again, Instagram. I don't know if it's the only social media site on. So or you, do you follow Elliot Page? Yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, yeah. me too. Me too. I love yeah. that. I, I I was there during the whole top surgery. I was there when he got on GQ. It was yeah. I remember watching his whole transition, and then someone. Someone asked me like, "Oh, do you watch Umbrella Academy?" And I'm like, "Oh, no, it's not. You know, it's not a show that I you know, really got interested in." And they said that the way that they handled his transition through his character was just so amazing. And I was like, "Well, now I gotta watch the show." Yeah, you turned just, me on to that to, show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and like good. the fact that they really did like transition his character as well, and it's just it was really cool. Actually, the support that he has behind him. But yeah, we he uh, he is coming out with a book. Uh, June of this year. Um, we'll keep you guys posted on that. I think we're gonna have to get a copy ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Do you read? Yeah, I read. okay. Yeah. You read? I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> you don't read? No, I audiobook. Oh. So if he, you okay. know, if he has an audiobook, I'll totally listen to it. But I, no, I really? fall asleep. Yeah, I think oh. it has something to do with my father because he used to. Shout out to the best father in the world. <laughs> he used to read me uh, stories at mm. bedtime. Right, mm-hmm. I used to get a bedtime story, and this. Happened all the way up until like fourth grade, fifth grade, where he would just come in and read, you know, a chapter of whatever book I was reading. And then you're out. So now I fall asleep <laughs> if I read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. I One of my favorite quotes for the longest time was, uh, a reader lives a thousand lives. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. No, I envy people who can just sit there in like their little stool with like the just their read. coffee. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That yeah awesome. it was for a while when I moved into my apartment last year, I would wake up in the morning. Um, make myself a bowl of cereal and then I'd go sit out on my patio and read that lasted maybe a month oh yeah okay well I got a girlfriend so then my mornings were oh taken okay, up. okay. So, yeah, yeah this was yeah this was sense. single Lindsay that had huh? the time understood yeah isn't I that mean, you just enjoy the me time whenever you're single but then yeah. you end up hating the me time whenever you're single yeah yeah <laughs> it's you know there's there's a double-edged sword there you're like oh I can do whatever I want and you're like oh I don't have anyone to do whatever I want <laughs> like, <laughs> I like it's it like, yeah, I mean I liked being single but I I love being in a relationship a lot more <laughs> All right, so guys, now it's up to our favorite, favorite Ooh, part of the episode. Coming out stories. As we're going to keep the ball rolling with this, is just because one of our b- biggest things that we decided we wanted to do when we started this podcast, I mean, we have to tell coming out stories. Oh, yeah, because, this is my favorite part. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, just how, many, how many times have you heard a coming out story and it just kind of like makes you empowered yourself? Mm-hmm. You're just like, wow. Like, that's just so awesome that somebody was able to just finally come out as who they are as a person and feel comfortable. Or they had a really easy coming out story and you're like, God, those parents are amazing. Yeah, I'm glad they're like, oh, it makes you want to cry almost. Yeah. 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 So to me, the coming out stories are very important to this podcast. So for sure. Keep them. For sure. Yeah. All right. So this comes from the website when when I came out dot com. It's uh, Lindsay found it uh, a couple months ago, yeah. which I'm very yeah. grateful for. They do a whole bunch of uh, anonymous coming out stories where the only thing they tell you about the reader is the their um, gender, their preferred gender, their age, and their preferred sexuality. So yeah, and they upload consistently too. Yes, like there's, there's multiple new ones. So until we start getting um, some stories submitted to us ourselves we'll we'll just probably keep reading from this site because i found uh, quite a few good ones yeah no i love it um so this story is from a uh, a female 14 year old lesbian right and i'm just gonna go ahead and jump in let's do it all right 
When I came out to my godmother, it was October 2019, and we were putting away the groceries she had bought that day. She and I are really close, so we started talking about mental health and self-care, and then we started talking about dating. She said, you're not allowed to date until high school, boy or girl. Ooh. Dot, dot, dot. What? Um, when I heard her say girl, I kind of zoned out for a second. And my heart started racing. Girl, I, I only feel you. imagine. Yes, yes. That's I understand crazy. that. Yo, anytime I was young and like just the word, like my, if my mother said anything about lesbian, it was like my ears perked. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was like a ringing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what about lesbians? What, what would you say? Um, okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, my heart started racing. So I pushed back all those doubts and said, actually... It's most like it's mostly going to be girls. Mm -hmm. She stared at me for what felt like a few minutes while my heart was beating out of my chest. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. That silence after you come out is just like, oh, man. Say something. Yeah. What are you going to say? Please <laughs> react. Say something, cause, anything, because this is killing me. I have just given you <laughs> yeah. my, like my soul. Um. So, yeah. So, uh, in parentheses, while my heart was beating out of my chest and... She suddenly started smiling. She said, I had a feeling you were hiding something from me, but I didn't know what. Uh, tears started rolling down my eyes and I sobbed into her chest with tears mm. of relief. It was the first time I had really said anything to anyone about this. And I thought she would reject it because of her Christian beliefs. I guess I was wrong. Wow. I, well, the fact that like she didn't even know what her godchild had to say to her, but just kept the conversation so open. Like, no, the fact that she even you're not said, allowed to you're date, date boy or girl. That's great. Yeah, like just, most people wouldn't even like have like included those last two words. Yeah, like I feel like what I would have got growing up was you're not allowed to have a boyfriend. Yo, until every time. high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah, always no boyfriend. boys. Yeah, no boys. I'm like, okay, that's fine with me. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's okay. works. All right, mom. <laughs> You got it. <laughs> I never disobeyed, technically. Technically. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. My coming out story is from a 19-year-old male who uh, identifies as bisexual. When I came out, I was back home with my parents for Christmas break, and we were watching a comedy. At one point, I asked, would it make a difference if I loved, if someone I loved was a guy or a girl? Hmm. The answer was simple. Of course not. Yeah, damn right. Yeah, that's amazing. I thought there would be some sort of euphoria or pride that I finally had the courage to come out, but it was just calm. Calm and certainty. Hey. This moment of realization, the knowledge I could finally be who, I'm, who I truly am, was much more powerful than any other feeling I could experience. Hey, damn wow. right. Yeah. yeah. Now armed with this calm, quiet, yet so powerful feeling that I can finally be who I'm meant to be. The face looks brighter next year and all the years to come. Hey, yo, accurate. When you finally start accepting yourself and you're okay oh with it. Oh my gosh, the most empowering feeling in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Just realizing who you are as a person, like nothing can take that away from you. I mean, that's why we highlight coming out stories. That's why we, I mean, I encourage people to come out, obviously on your own time. If yeah. it's not your time, no, no worries. But it's good for you to do eventually just because it is amazing that that relief you get when you're finally yeah. able to just not hide. Yeah. I think, I, you know, the, one of the big reasons we share coming out stories is every single one of them is going to be different. Yeah. I mean, everyone feels their own way coming out and everyone has people that responds a certain way. So for this person, it seems like it was, you know, all happiness yeah. um, and that immediate uh, euphoria feeling. But not everyone is that easy. So just just be time. Uh, take time. Be patient with it. Um, and I promise that feeling of certainty will come eventually. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up our episode today. Mm -hmm. So if you felt like you got any value, if you liked what Minnie and Lindsay talked about, or you just enjoy being in, you know, our space in the room with us, right? Because we enjoy being here with you guys. We do. Um, go ahead and do us a solid. Again, I'm just going to hammer it home. Do us a solid and hit that subscribe button. Subscribe, please, guys. Like, we'll, we'll work on we'll work on likes later. I'm not I'm not too worried about likes right now. I and mean, we do appreciate a little thumbs up here and there. But like, we want to know that you guys 
want to watch us more and how we know that is you guys subscribe yeah it helps us provide more content and and it helps us really it encourages us to you know give really good quality content to you so it, yeah. it, it, and it also it it helps the the holy youtube algorithm you know so for helping, sure yeah. for sure yeah. um to end it all you guys comment down below your coming out stories when you came out to those around you or when you came out to yourself you know, those two questions that you'll get asked after you do come out yeah. Um, we want to know if you don't want to leave it down below, you want to leave it anonymous. We'll also uh, attach our email down below. You guys shoot us a quick email. Our, uh, our email is always open. We're, um, we're, we're waiting, guys. Y'all y'all shoot it our way. True. And if you also have a podcast and you want to like comment what your podcast is, I would love to check it out. Or if you're local to DFW and you're ex- you're interested in being our guest. hey Also, yeah, yeah, let me know. Let me know. So, um, yeah, guys, I uh, wish y'all a really healthy 2023 yeah 2023 it's gonna be our year y'all hey. everyone says that every single year but this That's is the true. year this is the year this is it <laughs> <laughs> all right guys um that being said uh thanks for watching yeah always always i'm denise i'm Lindsay, and we're born this gay see you guys next time <laughs>